Great and sand stood all night. It's in good nick now. Breaking nice and clean. Comes off the hands. If anything that's sight on the dry side, but I think we'll give it a try and see what happens. Yeah, the pattern's got dowels in to keep it lined up. Parting powder. Stops the sand sticking. Some people use talcum powder, this is the proper stuff. We were found the guys used to use burnt burnt sand, real fine burnt sand. And these liberal dozen with that. And when I face this mold off with petrol bond, I will base the sand. Get a really good finish. It's only a small casting, so I'm not not use a lot of it, just enough to, enough to face the mould off. Brand new, it's not been used this. It stinks, it's got a funny earthy dirty smell. I quite like it. Right. A nice, a nice coat around my pattern. I'll pick all the detail up. My pattern's covered. So, ordinary sand on top of that. More rama. Ram it down. It's going to be rammed down fairly firm, but not. Not that firm that the sand closes up and the gases can't pass through it. You've, you've got to fairly well work with it to get the powder bond to take the shape. I wish I'd done, I wish I'd laid the box in metal and it would have stopped all the water evaporating out of it, getting pulled out of it. Right, stick it off, stick it in, smooth it off. All the excess gear back in the box. Let's see if it's all a mess. Nice. Very nice. With our half of the pattern goes on top, you can see it's got locating dowels. That's located on there. The top half of the box, flask. Got numbers on. So you get the right way around. Right. Now we need a, a sprue to pour the metal into and a riser, I'm going to use a hot riser which uh, when, I pour them, when I pour it it'll form a reservoir of molten metal that'll run into the run into the cast as it shrinks because it will shrink. You need a decent sized riser but it hasn't got to be bigger than what you're casting or that'll have the, it'll have the reverse effect. About half an inch away from the heaviest part of the pattern, which is the pork face, in there like that. Uh, once again, I'm going to face this off with Petra Bond, or the base molding sand. You 
just see the see the bit through. More bench. I wish you could smell this stuff. I don't quite know what it, what it smells of, but it's like a dirty smell, but nice at the same time. Not quite sweaty knickers, but now nah, you're on. You yeah, like a shot, you know. Right. We've got one of the sand. Going to pattern with it. I could have just done this in straightforward green sand, but you get a hell of a finish using this stuff normally anyway. See, it doesn't take a lot because it's just a small small casting. Right, so we've got a bit room there. Back it up with ordinary sand. No need to, no need to riddle this. It's uh, not coming into contact with anything. In, ram it down, get my riser settled in nice. Run the pattern right into the corners. You've got to work this, work the pepper bone quite hard to get it to, to go in. But it does give a good finish. Right, we got strickled off. We got strickling iron. It's a bit dark in here. I would like to do the video outside, but it's pissing down, raining. Right. Need some vents, vented. Vent the sand, the gas is out of it. So that's what hole, that's what riser, hot riser. Somewhere for the metal to go in, the sprue, all over there. Good, this, this thin wall pipe, I like it. Make sure we're in deep enough. Yep, excellent. Right, form a little basin around here to pour into. Something like that. Firm the sand down. Clean the top of our riser up so no bits can fall in there. Metal goes in there, comes up there, fills the mould, hopefully. Not 
that. Doesn't always happen that the patterns actually come out of the sand by itself, which is good. It's come out nice and clean as well. I'm going to leave that because I have a feeling that the whole pattern is going to lift out, and I don't want that to happen just yet. We need a nice basin in here. This collects any shite that's in the metal. Hopefully, it stops in there. Then all a nice little runner across there. Or metal. Come on a gate from there into the casting itself. A nice wide one. There you want to pattern out. Um, See, normally they come apart like that. Normally that will be left stuck on the top part. So we need that removing. Wrap an iron, give it a bit of wrap about, loosen it off, see it's starting to move. Moving. Gently straight out. Clean up our gate. Looks good. It's a sand, they're going to be blown out. If you don't blow them out, they'll just fall in, spoil the job. Right. Need a core, I've got a couple left. Select the best one. Six and two threes. Probably that one. Check it for length. Excellent. Gently. They're what they call a core print, or oh, right, core prints. Gently place that into there like that. And see what happens, the metal runs down your sprue into your basin, runs along this passage, through your gate, fills it up, and you're left with a hollow where the core is. Right, we'll put this somewhere safe. Across there. And we're half safe. Right, top off. What we need now. We need some vents putting in. The highest part of the mould is actually that little dent there, which is going to be a, a boss for the cylinder drain cock, so we'll put one in there. You push the wire straight through and pull it out, don't pull it back. We need one in the end of the core print. The quarter vent out of. Same on the other side. One through there. One for the core. It blew out. I'm using ordinary green sand, I generally spray the surface of the mould with brake cleaner uh, with graphite dissolved in it and then set fire to it. Uh, but with the, the petrol bond, the oil based stuff, you don't need to. Right, we'll try and get it together. Number 
three and number three on the box. Locating pin, locating pin, straight down. Fasten the choke with cable ties. Big got flax, big got flax screw to put weights on. So we've got metal, metal will be going at that basin. That's your sprue down there along the passage. It'll fill this up. Once the once the cavity where the pattern was, once it fills up, the metal will float the top of here. And I'll try and get a close up as it cools down. You'll see that metal disappear. It shrinks down. It actually feeds the casting. If you don't do that, you end up with voids and all kinds of problems. See, and I've never cast this pattern before. I've cast bigger ones and had a hell of a job with it. Right, so we've got two done, ready to go. Big dad about. Oh, you good? Felt the bits. Don't know why it felt the bits, but it felt the bits. You know what I'm talking about is, do the bastard again. <laughs> 